Open RAN has the potential to improve competition, network flexibility, and costs. But how close are we to fully automated Open RAN networks? Rafakat Chaudhry, Chief Technologist, RAN Automation Communications Technology Group at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, is here to discuss this hot topic in telecom. Thanks for being with us. You know, we hear that telcos have started moving toward RAN disaggregation, and as a result, RAN automation is seen as an accelerator for this transformation. Could you tell us a bit about the challenges telcos are facing and why automation is so important for them to succeed or maybe even just survive? Radio access network uh, is an area that continues to draw a major portion of uh, CapEx and OpEx spend by the service providers due to its being uh, proprietary and distributed in nature. And also at the same time, they feel pressure on, on revenues and margins uh, while they need to continuously, continuously need to maintain uh, the RAN, uh, as well as keep invested in due to the direct impact on customer experience and the need for new services. Radio, uh, radio access network disaggregation helps customers address some of those challenges uh, by offering choice uh, thanks to the openness uh, and also uh, it, you know, adoption of the clarification technology and also use of AI-based automation uh, that would enable eventually revenue generating services, uh, especially uh, to enable enable 5G potential. Uh, RAN automation is uh, critical to uh, realize those business benefits uh, and also uh, simplify the operations for uh, such a multi-vendor and, and an open network where different layers are provided by, by different different partners in an open RAN environment. Uh, basically, some of the key requirements for automation are around ability to roll out and manage uh, virtualized workloads, uh, virtualized and containerized workloads on thousands of sites uh, running across across the country, managing it as a single uh, seamless process, as well as managing other important aspect uh, important aspects like security and observability and support for uh, you know, standardized interfaces. Uh, with the help of automation, uh, uh, customers are able to uh, address those challenges as well as evolve to uh, you know, new uh, clarification and uh, AI-based automation approach, uh, gradually eliminating the use of traditional tools and processes and getting ready for full ORAN uh, deployment. So have you noticed an acceleration of RAN automation projects or are we still at the early stages? Yeah, before that, let's recognize that uh, the effort around standardization and, and more than that, actually defining the vision for, for open RAN, that's being primarily led by the service provider themselves and the umbrella for organizations of like Open RAN Alliance or, 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 or TIP. Uh, and, uh, Everyone recognizes that it's a journey, you know, that realization of that vision is a journey, uh, you know, uh, and it will take some time before standards are mature enough and there's enough vendor support available so that they can be actively rolled. However, uh, by the way of, you know, ongoing POCs and trials and, and, and RFPs, a lot of customers are already exploring how to achieve some of the quick wins that is offered by overall, uh, by, by the disaggregation in terms of for example, ability to roll out virtualized uh, software workload or video VCUs on a, on a COTS hardware. And that gives them an immediate quick wins in terms of, uh, you know, uh, being able to disaggregate hardware from software, as well as this serves as a, as a platform to go further towards a full ORN, ORN compliance. And this is where we see a lot of customers are now actively, uh, you know, not just doing POCs, but some of them have gone move forward with their with their disaggregation journey by rolling out VRAN, uh, uh, you know, as as a as a as a bridge to or as a journey towards overall uh, ORN uh, deployment. Uh, and uh, many of them those are already able to have uh, several thousand of sites running as a virtualized uh, RAN. Uh, where they're running uh, software from, you know, traditional radio vendors, video VCU software from traditional radio vendors, and on, on a COT server like HPDL 110 or other, other, other servers. And this has helped them, uh, first of all, 
achieve certain uh, flexibility uh, in terms of procurement options as well as operational uh, agility so because they can swap vendors across the same hardware and, and cloud operating system. They have, they've already achieved those benefits. Now, many of them are actually moving towards utilizing the same SMO framework and the tool sets to, uh, add, to manage some of the aspects in the, in the traditional RAN as well as some kind of a hybrid operation. And, and that's, that's important for a lot of them because, first of all, uh, a lot of technology around orchestration and assurance that have been in place already, uh, you know, for a lot of time, like HP uh, installed based on orchestration and assurance and AI based uh, automation that has been used already by several customers across the globe in the core as well as in the traditional RAN. So uh, they see the benefit of actually start rolling out those features which are common for both virtualized RAN and as well as traditional RAN so that they can start retiring some of their legacy tools and processes and get it ready for a full uh, uh, ORAN uh, deployment in the future. From the examples you mentioned, what are the main lessons learned from these automation projects? So uh, first of all, th there are certain quick wins that are already there. Like I, I give an example for VRAN workload. Uh, so basically ability to uh, virtualize the software, base-pen software on a COT server and use the automation capabilities around info automation, cloud orchestration, uh, video VCU management as well as assurance. Uh, so, th and, and that's a quick win that's already in hand. Uh, a lot of customers are able to reach out and, and utilize that and build on that. So we do not need to necessarily wait for uh, time before the full standards are, are ready and there's a wider acceptance for or wider adop adoption of standardized interfaces, even with pre-standard interfaces or traditional using traditional capabilities. Uh, that VRAN could be rolled out for, for the purpose of quick wins. Secondly, uh, extending the same set of tools to use the hybrid, to manage the hybrid operation. Uh, so features like, uh, you know, radio deployment automation, configuration, sound optimization, assurance, TGPP RAN KPIs, slice management, all of those things already exist. And this is something that could be a common functions in an SMO architecture that could be used for uh, traditional RAN as well as for the smaller part of the network, which is still VRAN or, or and, and going into to ORAN. So they are able to uh, you know utilize that in, in investment to manage to have some early uh, improvements in the traditional RAN as well by retiring retiring tools and processes and helping organization to step up and and adapt new technology. Uh, another aspect is uh, from our experience, uh, you know. Uh, by introducing a model-driven or a templatized orchestration and automation technology, uh, which is pre-validated with multiple layers and multiple vendors, that helps minimize uh, this SI risk, as well as uh, addressing uh, you know the issues like time to market. So, kind of a pre-built, pre-validated solution that can be readily deployed, you know, helps uh, minimize time to market and also eliminating the unknowns uh, in advance. This means uh, additional additional effort on the part of the vendor like HPE, but that has uh, immediate business benefits for customers as they are able to uh, reduce their risks. So this year, HPE introduced a new RAN automation system. Could you give us an understanding of what this offering brings to the market and why it is so relevant for telcos? So HP RAN automation uh, product that was announced earlier in the year that draws on our years of experience in orchestration and assurance that have been already used by uh, our, our customers across core and radio networks, as well as, uh, you know, fixed networks uh, uh, for quite some time. Uh, we're basically leveraging the SMO framework uh, as per ORAN line specifications to build, uh, build uh, you know, pre-integrated end-to-end SMO solution uh, that can help customers solve today's problem with his VRAN uh, rollout and management, uh, as well as helping use the same technology for hybrid management, you know, in terms of radio management, in terms of assurance and, uh, you know, slice management, et cetera, RAN slice management uh, specifically, uh, and, and, and use that technology already in production to solve those, those problems. Now, there are some of the key things uh, that are a bit different in this, in this uh, offering. First of all, HPN automation is a SaaS offer, 
delivered over public cloud or in some cases in, in private cloud as well. That means that it is it is installed, maintained, operated by 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 HPE. That uh, helps uh, simplify operations for the customers, and it provides a pre pre integrated, pre validated uh, you know templates and configurations for different uh, RAN partners, so that customers can uh, you know start using the functionality without any complex system integration. Some of the other things that we also address for the solution is, you know, uh, leveraging uh, uh, security um, capabilities uh, from uh, from within HPE to ensure uh, that right server, you know, arrives at the right place and is authenticated and there's no tampering on the on the way, you know, in terms of silicon root of trust, in terms of using uh, customer signed certificates, etc. So uh, it's a it's a pre-integrated solution that that will be available as a as a GA product by end of the year uh, now in in few weeks uh, and uh, with that we are able to manage the entire rollout for for VRAN sites from setting up infrastructure operating system or cloud whichever is needed by by the radio vendor orchestrating VDU VCU workloads doing day zero configuration uh, and connecting to radio and doing configuration for the day zero uh, radio parameters uh, not just that, we are able to uh, uh, enable uh, observability and assurance from day one for the hardware as well as cloud, video software on the, on the way to the radio parameters and use that for uh, closed loop healing for uh, for the cloud and, and applications part, but as well as optimization for, for the radio parameters as one integrated solution that can use that that can be deployed to manage VRAN as well as serving as a foundation towards full ORAN when, when standard interfaces like O1, O2, and A1 are made available by, by the, by the uh, RAN partners. Well, we will continue to watch the evolution of Open RAN, and thank you for your insights today, Rafakat. Thank you very much.